Hi students, this is Mr. Bickford and today we are starting chapter 5, Integers and the Coordinate Plane. For most video lessons, you will be using a Focus or Cornell note page and you can see how this, the structure of this matches the Cornell note page. You've got your questions or problems right here and then a note section. So I'll be doing questions or problems here and then the note section. That Most of the time, that's what you're going to be doing. Chapter 5, though, starts with a lab, and you are not going to be using a focus note page. You will be using a number line. So I'm going to give you a page, a number line like this, and the first thing I want you to do when you get your number line is this. I, what I want you to do is hold it up to the light and fold it over and I want you to fold it so that the hash marks, the little up and down lines, completely match up on top of each other. I'm going to hold it up here so you can see they're not matched up, but as I twist the paper, as I slide the paper through my fingers, I can make it so that they completely, so not lined up, and now I slide it and right there. They look totally lined up just like that. And I'm going to fold this right down the middle. So now when I open up my number line, when you open up your, your number line, it should look like that with a fold right on the middle. Okay, right on that middle mark. The first thing I'm going to have you do on that number line now is right in the middle, we're going to label that point zero. So, so far your number line looks like that. Next, we're going to label off to the right. Those are positive numbers. And I'm actually going to draw a little arrow coming out of, from zero and put a positive. And I'm going to number one, two, three, four, five. So, I'm indicating if I start at zero and I move to the right, I've got positive numbers. The next thing I want you to do on your number line is this. So I'm going to fold this over like this. And now I'm going to look through. Again, you can hold this up to the light and you'll be able to see it. But I'll show you that one more time. Here's your number line. You're going to fold this over and you're going to hold it up to the light. And if I actually hold this up real close, you can actually see real faint numbers through the page. If you look close, you can see those. I'm going to trace whatever number, and I'm going to trace those right through the page. Again, you'll see this much easier on yours when you hold that up to the light, but then now I've got one, two, three, four, five that I traced through the page. Open your number line back up. So now it looks like this. So again, I trace those numbers right through the page. Now when I open it up, it looks like that. And if I hold that up close, you can see numbers through the page that are on the back of it. Now they are backwards, but I can tell that that is a one. I can tell that this is a two. That is a three. But these in this direction are negative. So I'm going to label those negative numbers. I'm also going to draw an arrow moving to the left from 0 and say that those are negative numbers. So now your number line looks like that. You've got positive numbers going out to the right and negative numbers moving to the left. And the next thing, we're going to add some arrows onto the very end of the number line because number lines really go forever in both directions. So I'm just going to add arrows. So now your number line looks like this. Next, we are going to put a point on all the integers on this number line. So the lab is about integers. For most sixth graders, that is a new vocabulary word. 
I am going to use a highlighter and I'm going to put a point on the integers on my number line. And then I'll show you what it looks like. I have put a green point on all the integers. So 0 is an integer. So is 1. So is 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. All of those are integers. The spaces in between that are, that are not green are not integers. So the integers are whole numbers, 0, and negative whole numbers. On my number line, I'm going to write the word integers. And I'm also going to write non-integers. So integers are green. The non-integers, I'm actually going to use a different color. So the integers are green. I'm going to grab a yellow. And I'm going to make, I'm going to highlight all the spaces in between the integers yellow. Now your number line looks like this. You've got integers in green. And one thing you should remember is that these keep going, right? 6 would be an integer. So would 7. So would 25, way out there. So would a million. And same with negatives. So they keep going. This pattern continues forever. The whole numbers, positive and negative, are all integers. The numbers in between are non-integers. So what are the numbers in between? Well, right where my pencil is, that would be a half or 0 0.5. That's not an integer. I could move over here to 2.25 or 2 and a fourth. That's not an integer. It's not a whole number. Um, same thing on the negative side. It's only the whole numbers, positive and negative, and 0. All the numbers in between, if there's a fraction part or a decimal part, it's not an integer. It would be yellow, non-integer. OK, next. Um, so now you have a good model for integers and non-integers. And the next thing I want to talk about is this. Number lines can be horizontal, like this, like the horizon. They can also be vertical. So if it is vertical, it rotates like that. Positive numbers go up, and negative numbers go down. I'm going to make a new number line on this page, so you do not have to have this for part of today's lesson. You can just watch this part. Positive numbers go up. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So here again, horizontal number line. When I rotate it like this, we've got a vertical number line. Positives go up, negatives go down. But you can see how it works the same way if you were to fold this over. This 5 would land on this 5. This 4 would land on, oops, I forgot negative sign. Negative, negative. Vertical number line, horizontal number line. In the lab, in today's lab, uh, one thing you're going to be doing is uh, using integers to describe a real-life situation. The real-life situation, in this chapter we're going to learn about lots of real-life situations that integers can represent. In the lab, we're going to talk about sea level. So sea level, if we're going to use integers to describe sea level, sea level would be right at 0. That's sea level. Things live above sea level. OK, 
Okay, if they live on land, they live above sea level. And if they live below sea level, we would use a negative integer to describe where that thing lives. So a fish might live, spend most of its life at negative four feet below sea level. Um, something else that lives on land, we might say lives at, usually spends a lot of time at positive three or positive one. Above, keyword above sea level is gonna make it a positive integer. Below sea level, keyword below, is going to mean that is a negative, it's below sea level. Sea level is right at zero. So now I think you're ready to answer, uh, to work in your workbook. The two pages in your workbook that go with this lab are page 343 and 344. Make sure you don't lose your number line. Uh, this will be punched. This one's not, but the one you get will. It'll have a hole punch. And don't lose it. Make sure this is part of your notes for Chapter 5. Great model for integers and non-integers. Okay, that does it for uh, Chapter 5 uh, Inquiry Lab on integers. I'll see you again soon for Lesson 1.